Have you ever taught in a toxic classroom environment? It's no fun. It might not even be your fault. It might be the, you know, you took over for a previous director that just had no rehearsal standards or maybe the attitudes are really poor. Sometimes you get a senior class with senioritis and that can get really toxic really quick and some of the underclassmen can kind of join in, in that attitude and that can be really not fun. So the milk's starting to spoil or maybe you got there and it's rancid already. What do you do about it? What are some strategies to fix a toxic environment so that you can get what you need to get done in your orchestra class? So usually it's not the whole class that's toxic. If it's the whole class that's toxic, well, that's an even bigger problem. But usually it's just some individuals in the class with some really bad attitudes. And we can try to figure out where that's coming from and then maybe isolate or work on those attitudes. So th this can come in not just uh, in your classroom, but we have this like cyber bullying, cyber type stuff going on on the interwebs where students are communicating outside of your classroom or maybe even inside of your classroom, but in a space that you can't really see it because it's on a group me or a hangouts or WhatsApp type of deal. And it's just all this toxic activity that you're not even necessarily aware of, but you're feeling the effects of. So if you can kind of figure out what's causing this, um, who's causing it, uh, that, that's going to be very helpful. If it's just one or two students and they're just absolutely terrorizing your class and, and causing lots of problems, you, you might want to consider the possibility of removing those students. You know, Talk to them, talk to their parents and say, hey, look, this is going on. This is really bad for everybody. Uh, they're making orchestra no fun. Um, there's not a lot of learning taking place in here because of all this stuff. So we're going to let you have an opportunity to fix it and do better, or uh, you're going to have to choose another class. Now, at least at my school, orchestra is an elective class, so they elect to take my class, and I also elect to have them take my class. Not everybody gets to take orchestra. They have to go through an audition. They have to sign a behavior contract that are certain uh, expectations in place, especially for behavior, and if they don't follow those expectations, well, see ya, we don't need ya, and I hate to be that way, but again, it's for the good of the whole group, not just for like the one or two kids that don't want to behave themselves and want to make life miserable for everybody, and, and really themselves too, and it ends up being a good thing for them because they if they're going to act that way, they probably don't need to be in your class. They probably need to be someplace else. You know, for a lot of kids, I recommend that they go off into athletics, you know, particularly um, join the wrestling team because when they're being tied up into a human pretzel, it kind of puts things into perspective for them. And they think about the good old days of back when they were in orchestra and they're like, ah, maybe I shouldn't have made everybody's life miserable because being a human pretzel is no fun. Do you have a code of conduct for your students? Is your group special? Do you have to do special things to be in your group? If not, you might want to work on that, and you might want to have your students come up with those expectations. Hey, do you want this class to be special? What do you expect out of yourselves, and what do you expect out of each other? Let's make a list. You know, What do you think that we should need to do to be an orchestra? How do you think we should act and treat each other? Come up with a list. Hey, here's our list. We're going to come up with a behavior contract, sign it. If, if you don't want to do this, then again, see ya. We don't need you. So eventually, everybody ends up graduating. Either if you teach at the high school level, they graduate from high school and move on. Or if you teach at the middle school level, they end up graduating and going off to high school. So what that means is that you don't have them forever. Um, hopefully. Hopefully they can pass and graduate. But... What that means is that you're going to get in some new students. Either you're, if you're at the middle school level, you're going to get in some beginners, and then they're going to become second-year player, third-year player, whatever. At, at the high school level, you know, you're going to get freshmen. Um, and if you're in it for the long haul, you know, what a strategy that you can have is don't mix up the new students with the toxic students. So if you've got some students with some really, you know, bad rehearsal etiquette and whatever toxic attitudes, you know, keep a, your freshman class separate from 
sophomores, juniors, seniors. That way, those bad attitudes don't bleed into the freshmen and separate them as much as you can. And then eventually they'll be sophomores and eventually they'll be juniors and then eventually everybody will be gone and then you'll just have all lovely, sweet children in your program. Okay, middle school program, same thing, beginners, you know, and then when they move up, don't mix them in, you know, with the other students, wait, you know, until they leave and there's somebody else's problem. And then um, eventually, again, you know, it won't be long before you just have sweet, pleasant children in your orchestra. But if you start mixing them up, then that toxic attitude can spread. And then, you know, those behaviors can start going on. Then you get kids that are out of control and it's just no fun. So just if you if you if you if it's possible, just don't blend and mix those students together. Just keep them separated. Isolate the toxic students from the sweet children. Again, the theme of this is to stay calm, you know, just stay calm, be patient. All right. It's just a, sem a temporary situation. It's not going to happen forever. If you're patient, you know, and you see the potential in your students, even the toxic students, if you find some potential in them, you can work on them. And, you know, you just sometimes you might have to wait a little while and then the toxic students will be in the minority and the sweet children will be in the majority and teaching will be a whole lot more fun. What you might find is after a little while, especially at a, you'll have a concert and you'll have different orchestras playing and you'll have your toxic kid orchestra play and they won't be playing so well and why would they play well if they rehearse like lunatics? And then you have your sweet kid orchestras play and they're playing a lot better than the upperclassmen and everybody says, huh, why is that? It's like, well, because they have good attitudes and they rehearse intelligently. And then they say, oh, well, we want to sound that good. And so they might end up turning it around too because everybody likes to do well. Maybe you go to a contest and your freshman orchestra beats your seniors. Well, wouldn't that be wonderful? Maybe that will give your seniors some incentive to turn things around and again, start rehearsing intelligently and have good attitudes. Sometimes there's something that we're doing that creates some toxicity. So we might have to use some self-reflection and saying like, is there something that I'm doing that's causing this? You know, um, sometimes unintentionally we can do things that can create some envy or jealousy or that kind of thing. Um, there's that expression, uh, comparison is the enemy of joy. You know, if, if you're one to do a lot of chair tests or if you do something and someone's used to be in this chair and now they're this chair or whatever and, you know, you make it too cutthroat and competitive, well, it might get toxic in a hurry. So be careful. Maybe try dialing it back a little bit and see if that doesn't improve things. Um, you know, there, there's many ways to get good results and having that cutthroat competitive atmosphere, sometimes the... Juice isn't worth the squeeze. I remember one time um, I was in a environment that was pretty competitive and I remember um, a situation where I was about to go play a jury and I sat my violin down for a second to get a drink of water right before I went on stage. And in that split second when I went to get a drink of water, somebody had messed with my pegs and when I went on stage I was wildly out of tune and I had to like really tune again and the faculty members that were there uh, made, you know, one of them made a comment like, you should have tuned before you got on stage. And it's like, oh, th thank you. Yeah, I didn't realize, you know, um, and I didn't stay there for very long. Um, in fact, I left right after that. It's like, you know, this isn't for me. And if, if it's too competitive, you might find students that just don't gel well with that. and. It's just, it's just not worth it. It wasn't making me a better player. I didn't feel like anybody cared about me there. And I didn't really need to be there. I, you know, I didn't really care how prestigious it was or what everybody else was doing. It just, um, I, I just didn't feel like I was learning anything. I just felt like I was being picked on constantly. And so I was, I was happy to get out of that situation into a much better situation. Uh, another thing that can create toxicity that sometimes we do is showing favoritism. And uh, I know it, it's hard to do. We get students that are really sweet and students that we gel with pretty well. And it's like, yeah, we give them opportunities and it's like, ah, why don't I just give you the solo or why don't I do that? And um, if other students feel like maybe they didn't deserve it or you know, maybe they're getting something that 
other people aren't getting the same opportunities, it's not fair. Sometimes that can create toxicity too. So you get, have to be very careful with that. Not necessarily like they say, well, everything should be merit-based. Okay, well, what does that mean? And by what standards, you know? Um, and should we reward people for, for, for having good attitudes? Should we reward people for like helping set up chairs, rack, you know, like should we reward people for that kind of thing too? Should it all just be like, who can play the best and, and what does that sound like and, and all that kind of stuff? Well, maybe, maybe not entirely. Maybe we should spread the opportunities around a little bit more. But if we're, you know, giving things to people that they don't necessarily deserve just because we like them better, that might create a toxic environment too. If we feel like the milk is starting to spoil and things are starting to get toxic and we call it out early, and we say, hey, look, look what's happening. We need to fix this, especially like with a, a new senior class. You know, if they start to get that senioritis and they start coming into class late, they stop, you know, practicing, they stop doing the stuff that they're supposed to do. And if you can stop it early and call it out and say, hey, you know, do you, is this what you want your legacy to be? Is this how you want to be remembered at our school? If you can, if you can stop it early, you can prevent it from getting a whole lot worse and you can turn it around. The longer it goes, the harder it's going to be, you know. It's like driving a cruise ship. You can't just make a sudden course correction. You know, if you start feeling like you're getting off course, the earlier you catch it, you can get back on track. If you get really off course, well, you're going to spend a long time correcting that course. Sometimes you can fix the problem through socialization. You can take kids with really good attitudes and you can pair them up with kids that are struggling and sometimes they'll help each other out. Um, you know, if, you, if you've got a kid that just is always late, you know, assign them a buddy, you know, and say, hey, can you, can you help this, this kid? You know, if you've got somebody that isn't turning their stuff in, isn't practicing, whatever, it's like, hey, you know, can, can we help this, this person? And sometimes that can fix the problem too. Sometimes students don't feel like they're a part of your group. They feel isolated. They don't feel like they're on the team. Is there something that we can do to change that? Can we include them somehow? Can we make sure that they feel welcomed? You know, if, if, they're, if they're just committing a lot of deviant behavior, you know, it's, easily for, it's easy for them to feel isolated and you know, go their own way or whatever. Um, but can we bring them back in and can we say, hey, you know, you're part of our group too you know, we love you, we support you, come on, you know, just, just be on our team. You, and if they, if they just feel wanted, sometimes they'll turn it around too. Sometimes students just have insecurities, you know, it's like, well, I'm a senior now, I don't really feel like a senior, I don't really feel like I'm playing like a senior, and so I'm just not gonna try, you know, I'm gonna deliberately not do well, so that, you know, because if I do try and I fail, well, that's gonna feel really bad, so if I deliberately fail, well, at least it's my choice, and it's like, well, of course, I stop practicing, I stop showing up, I stop doing all the stuff I'm supposed to do, and then they don't feel bad about it. So if we can help overcome those insecurities and, you know, and give them more confidence and give them more support, uh, sometimes that will help create a toxic situation. I wish every student, and, and really every, every person, understood that it's okay not to be perfect. It, nobody's perfect. It, it's okay to make mistakes. You know, just be you. Just do your best, okay? And we're here to support you. All right, so hopefully if you've got a toxic thing going on, um, I've given you some strategies to where you can kind of fix things. Hey, have you ever had a situation like that? Have you ever had some toxic kind of junk going on in your orchestra, how did you fix it? Drop a comment in the comment section below. We'd love to hear from you. In the next segment, we're going to talk about students quitting. Sometimes uh, we hear these rumors like, everybody's quitting. What are we going to do? Everybody's quitting. What do we do about that? We'll see you in the next one.